One of the things that will take your already good designs and turn them into absolutely stunning, amazing designs is by adding motion into your UI or into your web design projects. I've been trying to learn Spanish lately and the application that's really helped me to do that is Duolingo. And when you look at Duolingo, you can't look at it for more than two seconds without realizing that it is full of all of these amazing, exciting little animations that just give you that little hint of delight. Each one of these is guiding me down the page, welcoming me to learn more and just kind of enjoy my learning experience. So in this video, I want to teach you how to add motion into your designs, whether that be websites, mobile applications, or software by using an amazing technology that is the industry standard for motion in your digital designs, and that's Lottie Files. I have a project that I'm working on inside of Figma and I've intentionally left a spot open where I know that I wanna include some form of animation. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you the three ways you can start using Lottie files to add that motion to your design, starting from the simplest to the most custom. The first way that I'm gonna show you to use Lottie files actually answers the question, why don't I just use an animated SVG? I heard that's a thing. And while animated SVGs are great, they are heavier, they are harder to work with, they're harder to hand off to developers, and the workflow there is just a lot more complex. But if you have an SVG in your project already, like I do in this little kind of three-dimensional square, I've already exported it to an SVG. And one of the easiest ways to start working with Lottie is to utilize their SVG to Lottie converter. So all I have to do is go to lottiefiles.com slash SVG Lottie, grab my SVG and drag it onto the canvas. And Lottie is gonna do the work for me by bringing in that SVG of mine and offering me some really cool out of the box options that I can immediately implement. So for instance, I can select this one that has a little bit of a rotation, a two dimensional kind of rotation effect happening. And I can immediately upload that to my account to preview it or download that Lottie. Now to all of you Figma users out there, this workflow can be a whole lot easier by just using the Figma plugin, the Lottie files plugin. It's free to download, connect to your account, and you can head straight over to SVG to Lottie, pick what Every element you have on the screen that is in SVG format and you can animate it right there and it'll give you a bunch of those really cool out of the box options. So you can do all of this without having to use the browser. Let's talk about the second way that you can work with Lottie files and that's by actually accessing the free database of already established community driven animations. There are hundreds of thousands of them and you can find them over at lottiefiles.com. You drop down to products and go to free animations and that will load up the library that you can search and filter down and find things by name. But look at these animations. They're absolutely amazing. You can get them for anything and everything that you need. And again, they are free of charge. So just start a free Lottie account. You can preview them. You can scrub through them. You can change the background color and even things like the color palette down here. When you've decided that you really, really like this animation, you can do a few things here. Number one, you could actually categorize and set them into collections. Like I have a couple collections already created there. I could like this and show some appreciation to the original creator, or I can download it. And when I get my download options, I have the option of a Lottie JSON file. I can do an optimized version of that. We can do a After Effects project, so I can immediately take this into After Effects and customize it. Or I can grab a GIF or customized GIF or an MP4. I've actually gone ahead and downloaded the animated GIF as well as the compressed JSON file. And when I come back over to Figma, all I did was drop it into my project and I can immediately press play and you can see I get some really fun animation immediately right into my project. How stinking cool is that? Lottie Files is the largest platform, the industry standard, and it is the central location that has the largest library of animations that you can actually access and use inside of your projects. And Lottie Files are the most widely adopted industry standard format for getting motion into your project projects. It's used by all the big names in the business. We're talking about Netflix and Nike and TikTok and all of them, as well as small teams and freelancers. And the reason it's the industry standard is because it's so easy to use. 
The files are lightweight, super customizable, and you can actually create a workflow around it that's repeatable and efficient. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna share with you a workflow that allows you to create custom motion and animation for your projects. It's gonna include After Effects, Figma, and the Lottie Files website. I'm gonna jump into After Effects and you can see I have a design on my canvas and I'm gonna go ahead and play my animation. It's really smooth, it's really fun. I want this to be that feature piece of motion inside of my design. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to download the plugin for After Effects that allows Lottie to work inside of it. You probably have to give it some permissions and then you're gonna have to do the same thing, install a plugin for Figma or Adobe XD, whatever program you're using, and then you'll have everything you need to start this workflow. Since I have that plugin already installed, I'm gonna head up to Window, Extensions, and hit Lottie Files. I'm gonna open up this extension window and Lottie Files immediately loads with my account attached. So you can see here, I have every sequence that I'm currently working with. I'm currently working on sequence number one, and so that's the one we're gonna wanna actually implement and get going inside of this workflow. You can see each of those sequences are represented here, but we also have not only the files that we're working on, we have the ability to go to all of our files in our Lottie Files account. These are all the different projects I'm working on, and I can actually click on those, and I can actually see all of those animations. You might be asking yourself, where did all those animations come from? How was he able to create all of those in After Effects from scratch? Well, the answer is that I didn't create all of these in After Effects from scratch. These are just the collections that are found in my Lottie Files account. So you can see when I head over to my Lottie Files account, I have those different projects set up. So what it's doing is syncing all of your work, whether or not it's custom made right there by you, or if it's an animation that you actually pulled from the library and saved to a project or a collection, it's available to you inside of the plugin. But all we have to do to work on our custom animation is find the number sequence that we're working on. That's number one. I'm gonna hit the green arrow, which is going to open up the working area for that actual piece of animation. Once I have it, I can scrub through. You can see all the frames that are listed here, and I can actually see all the different formats I can immediately start downloading, right? I can get the JSON right from After Effects right here, the optimized version, which is 12% smaller than the Lottie JSON. I can get the dot .Lottie format, which if you're asking yourself, what is dot .Lottie versus Lottie? A Lottie file is a JSON file, and a dot .Lottie file is a special compressed file, but to do that and use that dot .Lottie file or compressed dot .Lottie file, you're gonna need some special setup, and that's something you can actually work with your development teams to see if they wanna use those file formats. You can also scroll down down and see a support checker so we can see that there's no issues currently found here. We can also change and customize a little bit of the background color right here. But we really like this. It's doing everything we want it to do. So why don't we just go ahead and save to workspace. It's going to upload and say, which one do you want? I'm gonna put this inside of our iOS app and I'm gonna go ahead and upload. And boom, just like that, our animation is now up on the web and it's ready for us to actually customize, comment, collaborate, and hand off to our development teams, which is our next step. Back on the Lottie Files website, and I'm inside of my iOS app project, and you can see my recently uploaded animation that we have here. It looks perfect, it's exactly what I want. I'm gonna click on it, and we're gonna get a lot of options right here in the Lottie editor, and you can do so much here, it's absolutely mind-blowing. First thing we can do is obviously scrub through our animation, right, and we can change the speed and make it loop if we want to, but we can also add comments to specific frames. For instance, I might say, you know, I'm not liking that spot where those two elements leave. I can click on the comment, I can add that comment right there, and I can leave a quick comment just like that. This project, this animation, does not currently have a status, so we can come up to the top right section and we can say that it is in progress or perhaps it needs review, and then your project manager or your stakeholders can approve and your developers can later on say that that animation has been shipped. This is so great for a collaborative workflow where you have a single source of truth for your animations. It lives here inside of Lottie Files and everybody has access to it. Everybody knows where that animation stands and what issues it needs to be resolved to get it shipped and out the door. We also have a lot of really great functionality over here on the right underneath our comments. We can see the animation's information like leaving a little description here, seeing all those 
feature support checks, letting us know that it's going to work in which platforms. We can actually go to the color palette and right on the fly, if we don't like this, we can change the color palette simply by clicking on some of these. Or we can insert a new color palette and build a brand color palette that it always implements. We can always go back to our brand color palette or we can reset it to what it used to be. You also have the opportunity to hit the handoff and embed tab, and that's going to allow you to create an asset link. And we can choose which version we want to use, which format we want to use. And there's immediately an asset link and an embed code, or you can get the O embed URL. And you can see it tells you you can use this animation in all of these different platforms, which is super great. Now there's a bunch of other options to customize here, like changing the bounding box, the transparency grid, manipulating the background color, and then viewing it in full screen. But what's also amazing is by downloading the free Lottie application, you can come up here and you can test it for mobile, and it's gonna give you a QR code. Now I have the Lottie application up and all I have to do is come down here to the preview section and you can see it's ready for me to scan that QR code. So I'm just gonna scan the QR code that's on my screen and immediately we get our animation loaded in our mobile device. We can see how smooth it actually is, which is pretty cool. Now what we've been looking at is the control center for this individual animation. And if we wanna get even more nitty gritty, we can open it up in the actual Lottie editor, which will allow us to change the unique colors and manipulate the animation by the specific elements by turning them on or off, deleting those elements, changing the color of them, and being able to really drill down and get specific with that animation, which means once you've left After Effects, technically you don't ever have to go back to it. And that allows you to stay within that next part of your workflow and be really, really efficient. Now we've done all of that work. The last thing you need to do is download and implement into your design and or hand off to your engineering teams. To do that, I'm gonna head up to the download and export button and it's gonna open up the tab that allows me to grab all of those formats we've already talked about. Lottie JSON, the optimized one, which is highly recommended. You can see it's currently working right now to optimize it for us. You can get that dot Lottie or that optimized dot Lottie version. But if you look down here, we can see there are other formats we can grab as well. And maybe we wanna grab an animated GIF that has transparency, a movie file, an MP4. You can throw all of those in your Figma file. We'll stick with the GIF and we'll go for a medium size. That's a 500 by 500 size. And then we're gonna go ahead and export that. All right, once we've downloaded it, we're just gonna grab it and bring it into our Figma file as that animated GIF. We're just gonna size it into place and put it exactly where we want it. And for you Figma users, you can do the exact same process in this workflow of exporting all the assets you need simply by using the Lottie Files plugin inside of Figma. You can jump over to the plugin and jump over to workspaces and jump down to the specific project you're on. This is our iOS app animation. And here you have the option to insert as a GIF. When you do that, it's going to ask you those same sizing options. And all you have to do is insert. And just like that, right from Figma, you have your GIF. And let's press play one more time on our prototype and you'll see there it is. And it looks actually really smooth as an animated GIF. You didn't even need to jump to something heavy like the movie format. All you had to do was animate it there. Well, that's it. That's everything you need to know to get started and add some of that amazing motion and interaction into your design projects. What do you think? Are you gonna start using Lottie inside of your projects right now? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and even motion design like this one. So make sure you ring that bell so you know when another one like this one comes out. Check the description down below for a bunch of helpful links to getting started with Lottie, like signing up for your account, getting all the plugins that you need for your design tools, After Effects, and even some other helpful tutorials. I hope you're having an amazing week designing amazing things Things, making amazing things and adding that amazing motion into your projects. See you in the next one.